So before we can run FEA, of course, we need to make the part. So here I'm making some arbitrary shape and dimensioning it accordingly, three feet long with a six inch radius and a six inch extension coming down. And I'm gonna end up doing a swept boss. First thing I need to do though is to make the cross section. So I'll dimension it here, six inches wide by two inches tall. And we're gonna sweep that along the profile. Once we've got our part made, we're going to have to set the material because it's got material properties built into it, like the modulus of elasticity. Well, let's go with, uh, we can go edit material and then let's make it some kind of uh, aluminum alloy. There's a variety of 6061 alloys. I'll pick the generic one. One thing to pay attention to is the elastic modulus. If we go into English units and elastic modulus of this value, and then just confirm here we've got the alloy set. All right, it's time to make a simulation. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the simulation tab is shown. If it isn't, you can right click here and probably find it right in this location. Make sure it's checked there so we've got it. We're gonna make a new study and it's gonna be a static study. There's nothing moving. So now I'm in my static simulation and I've got options over here. The idea behind finite element analysis is that we'll create what's known as a mesh. We're gonna break this into a series of a whole bunch of little elements that look like pyramids. You don't have to do this at the beginning. I'm just gonna show you for the sake of, so we know what's going on here. I'm gonna make a mesh. It creates the mesh and it turned my part into a series of little uh, pyramid shapes. And one of the things that we're gonna do is apply a force on the bottom of it. And let's pretend that the force acts kind of in this direction. And what we're gonna do is fix these nodes here. Each pyramid element has nodes at each corner. And we're gonna say, in, for the sake of the simulation, that these nodes are not allowed to move. To do that, I'm gonna right click here. We're gonna use a fixture, a fixed geometry. And it's telling me to select the face, so I'm gonna select this face. And what these symbols represent, the arrows indicate that this particular node is not allowed to move left or right, up and down, or in and out. The round parts of it also say that these nodes are not allowed to rotate. So this is a, effectively a cantilevered beam. So we've, or another way to think of it is we've completely glued this surface to a wall, for example. So we fix that in place, click OK here, and looking at it now, we've glued that, and now let's apply our force to this surface. So I'm gonna right click external loads, we're gonna go with a force, English units, and instead of, well, I could click here and say normal, and that would push upward on it. If I want to, I could reverse the direction, to pull downward on it. Let's go with a selected direction. So one thing I can do, uh, the selected direction maybe is that line. So it's now parallel to that line. If I want to, I can reverse that direction to pull it out that way. It's one way to do it. Um, another way to do it, if I clear this selection, if I select the face for the direction, now I can apply loads in particular directions. So if I wanted to have a load in that direction, and I also wanted it in the normal direction, I could do things like that. So let's just, uh, for the sake of this demonstration, let's have it pulling outward like that. So with all of that set up, let's click run this study. And now it's run and it's outputting the von Mises stress. And the stresses are so low, they're, you know, we, I'm reporting them in KSI, so thousands of PSI. I can right click here and go edit definition under those and the units, maybe let's try PSI to see if it shows up. And yeah, yeah, there's a small stress associated with von Mises from zero to 3.4 at the upper end of it. The deformation of this part is exaggerated for clarity. If I want to, I can uncheck deformed results. We could see what it uh, would look like without any deformation, or I could leave this, or I could go here, right click, go edit definition, and the deformed shape, instead of automatic, instead of, in this case, I'm exaggerating by about 15 or 16,000. Let's go true scale on that to see actually what's going on. So a one pound force down here, this is you know three feet long and several inches uh, in each direction. One pound really isn't enough to deform this shape very much at all. So one thing I could do, I could look at a different type of plot. Let's look at a displacement plot. So I right click results, went displacement, and now I've got these different options. Let's find out the displacement in the vertical direction, so the y direction. So I'm gonna say, instead of the magnitude of it, let's just look at the, the displacement 
Well, actually, let's look at the x displacement. So we're going to look anywhere on this part how far it's moved left and right. And I'm reporting my results in inches. And of course, with such a small force on there, I can't really see the displacement. But what I could do is right click and I'm going to go probe. And with my probe, I'm going to say at location and I can zoom in here. And let's just say I want to figure out that little corner. How far did that displace to the right? And again, we can't uh, we don't have enough significant figures displayed here to actually see it. Actually, what I'm going to do is go back and change the force. Instead of one pound, um, let's try a 100 pounds just to see. So I'll do that, rerun the study with the higher force on it, and now I can right click and get my double click, get my displacement up, probe on it, and now if I probe here, okay, I've got a small amount. Maybe for the sake of this, uh, this example, I'll increase, let's increase the force to a thousand pounds. So right, again, right click, edit definition, bump this up to a thousand pounds, and we're going to rerun the study now. So now let's probe it. Double click here to get the displacement and probe it. And on that location, yeah, okay, so we've got uh, 0.15 inches displaced to the right. So that's how I can get my displacement. If I want to, I can double click, go back to Von Mises, and again, right click, probe, and I'll probe uh, here the and unselected entities right here. That value, uh, updating that, I've got a value of, looks like about 119 PSI. Well, let's say we want to, I need to know, for example, um, the von Mises stress at, let's say that location, somewhere in there, I can right click, go probe, and now at location, I can probe anywhere a node is available. So I can't probe everywhere. The mesh limits the uh, locations at which I can probe. I can only do it at a node. So what I'm going to do, let's um, make the mesh uh, really, really fine so we get a better result. It might take a moment longer to compute it, but now my mesh is very fine and rerun the study and that will allow me to find information at each node where each element intersects. So now right click and go probe and we're going to probe at that location and right at that location I've got you know, right around 850 or so PSI. I can select elsewhere just to kind of see the trends, a high von Mises stress at the exterior due to the normal stress due to bending. However, that doesn't allow me to compute the von Mises stress at any particular location. And let's say I need to know it right at the midline and I need to know it, I don't know, a couple of inches down from that surface. What this means, what this means I need to do then is I need to create a mesh such that there is a node right at that particular location. So the way we do this is we're going to use a, we're going to go back to the model and we're going to insert something called under curves, we're going to insert a split, split line. And the split I'm going to use is a projection split. But we need to tell it where to split. And I'm going to draw, I'm going to make a new sketch on the right hand side. So let's sketch on this surface. And I'm going to use a rectangle. And what I'm going to do is use this rectangle to, I'm going to use this rectangle to identify a particular location. And let's pretend, uh, I don't know, I need it four inches to the right of that. And I need to come down uh, exactly, uh, say, three quarters of an inch. So this is going to allow me to put a node right there in the mesh so we can get some information. So again, I'm going to go insert, I'm going to go features, or insert and curve and a split line, a projection split, and I'm going to use this sketch to create a split on that surface. So what I've done now is I've actually got two surfaces kind of built right into this solid body. So when I create a mesh, it's going to create a node right at that location. I'll come back to my simulation, create a mesh, and run that. And when we look at the mesh that's being created, it does put a node right where we need it. And so let's run this study. And now what I can do, if I need the von Mises stress right at that location, I can go probe. And now that split becomes highlighted. So I can probe right at that location. And I find a von Mises stress for this geometry and loading of about 670 PSI. 
One other thing I could do if I want to, I could right click again and go probe and go on selected entities. And I can probe actually all of the nodes along this line, for example. Updating that, if I want to, I could make a little graph to show the von Mises stress as a function of the different nodes if we need to, to get data along each one of those.